Tenemos esperanza. Good evening, and welcome to worship. We're delighted you're here on our Pentecost weekend, celebrating one of the high festivals of the church, the Pentecost festival, uh, marking the birth of the church, and from the story in Acts 2. So, exciting festival time, which explains the colorful pyramids tonight, with the red expressing the fire of Pentecost, and the dove. So, delighted to have you here, uh, whether you are here in person or here with us virtually. Uh, also, we're excited today. We get to introduce our new summer intern. Uh, new to you as a summer intern, but he's been around here for as long as we can, as I can remember. Zach Osmondson, student at Gustavus Adolphus College. He's going to be a summer intern in our youth faith formation department. And we're thrilled to have Zach with us. And he's going to do the Bible story today. He wrote the prayers today. And probably three quarters of Pastor Brenda's sermon. So um, he's been very, very busy already as, as our summer intern. Delighted to have him here. Two weeks from tomorrow is our baccalaureate service. 
for graduating high school seniors. It's incorporated as part of our 1030 service out in the parking lot. Uh, if there's rain, we will bring it indoors. Uh, but uh, if you have a graduating senior uh, who hasn't contacted us yet, uh, please contact Ketty Spihar or a member of our uh, Youth Faith Formation staff. And uh, we've got one week left for you if you're going to support our LSS uh, Lutheran Social Service uh, Homeless Youth Project. Uh, the three houses, Safe House, Life Haven, and Resic, are all uh, safe houses, shelters for uh, youth who've been on the streets or who find themselves homeless. Um, we do a shower every year in May where we uh, have congregation members buy supplies that these individuals will then receive and be able to keep when they move out uh, to independent living. So uh, go online, Mount Calvary Outreach. You can order from Amazon, which I assume you've all been doing for the last 15 months. Uh, and have some experience, so order on Amazon, and then Amazon sends it here, and we will deliver to those uh, three uh, homeless shelters. So thank you for those who've responded thus far, and uh, if you intend to do that, you've got about a week left, because we'll wrap that up at the end of May. Also, um, if you have some clean sheets, new sheets, lightly used sheets, our quilters are asking for donations. Um, they purchase a lot of their own materials through donations. They, um, in fact, just delivered 57 uh, quilts to uh, Simpson House Homeless Shelter, and the board member was so impressed with the quality that uh, one of the board members donated $1,000 for them to buy batting for these quilts. And that lasts about four months for them, and uh, these sheets are another part that, you know, supplies that they need. To date, 10,371 quilts have been made and donated. Now, if you put, yeah, go ahead, Diane Strandberg. <laughs> Diane is our applause plant. She is here to stir applause whenever necessary. Uh, but if you put 10,371 quilts end to end, they would stretch from Mount Calvary to Abbott Northwestern Hospital. Which, to give you some idea, and all of these have been donated to various shelters or veterans groups. Um, another 14 were given to Martha Brannon at his house for distribution. So your support of those women is just crucial. And they're now back meeting after a hiatus during the pandemic, so uh, they're pretty excited to be cranking out those quilts. So sheets are needed. And uh, finally, we get to welcome Ella Willemson, who's going to be baptized today. So at the appropriate time, we invite you to join in that baptism uh, with the responses that you'll find either in your bulletin or on the screen. So um, let's get to worship. We gather to worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tongues of fire and the rush of violent wind. Pentecost sends us out into the streets to engage the other. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Pentecost is a life-changing encounter with the children of God. Hearing God's voice in each of our own languages, Pentecost speaks to God's passion for the particularities of human expression. As a day of divine embrace, Pentecost is God's insistence that I and the other are one. Thank God. 
Well, happy Saturday, everyone. Is this a thumbs up? I'm gonna do the Andrea thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs to the side. Adults too. Up, awesome, that's what I love to see. So, as some of you may know, this is the first weekend in Pentecost, and today we're gonna be uh, also celebrating uh, in our Bible story today, uh, the return of the Holy Spirit to uh, Jesus' disciples. Um, so, so now that the Easter season was over, Jesus had ascended back into heaven, and he had kind of left the disciples feeling a little bit lost, not, not really sure who to turn to, because they weren't used to having, uh, not having that, that guidance right by their side. Uh, but before Jesus had ascended back into heaven, he had promised that the Holy Spirit would come back down and be with them. So the disciples, they came together, men, women, children, all came together and they prayed. They prayed for days and they, they, they prayed um, to, for guidance and for the Holy Spirit to come to them. And then after several days, a strong wind came through the room and all of a the sudden they noticed that there were little tongues of fire on top of their heads and they had become speaking in languages that they didn't even know they knew how to speak. And, and they, they were using these languages to communicate with each other. And outside of the room, uh, there were people walking by, and they heard this commotion inside, these people talking in different languages. And some of them were amazed. They were amazed at, at uh, what, what was happening here and, and this, this power that they were seeing inside. And others were, were skeptical, and they had thought that maybe just these disciples had had too much wine or something like that. Um, but then Peter stood up. Peter stood up and he said, this shows that the promise has been fulfilled. The Holy Spirit has returned to us. And this is very important to remember then and now that God has kept his promise. And if we trust in him, he will always stand by our side, guiding us. He might not always give us the answer we want, but he will always be there supporting us in our lives and as we begin new chapters in our faith. Thank you for enjoying this Bible story with me. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and in the waters of baptism, we are reborn, children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So. I ask you, parents and sponsors, do you present Ella Marie Willemson to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? Ella? In Christian love, you presented Ella for holy baptism, and as she grows in years, you should faithfully bring her to the services of God's house. Model for her the Christian life. You also should place in her hands the holy scriptures and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion of the, with the church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. You promise, as parents and sponsors, to fulfill these obligations. I invite the congregation now to join the family in confessing the faith in which we baptize using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Ella Marie, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I invite, I invite your family and godparents, sponsors, to touch a little water to her head. Ethan, you too. Ella Marie, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome this new sister. Let us pray. Oh God, giver of all life, pour your Holy Spirit upon Ella. Look with kindness upon Erica and Drew. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you've given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them and us in our own baptisms so we may share eternally with each other the salvation you have given us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new sister a member of the priesthood that we all share in Christ Jesus and that we may proclaim the praise of God and his redeeming world. So please join me in the welcome. We, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. Almighty God, Father, Holy, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. First lesson comes from Acts 2, verses 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent, violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Frisia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Postulites, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Alleluia. Alleluia. send you the Spirit to be with you forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel according to John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. Today is Pentecost. After Jesus has risen, he tells the disciples he is ascending to heaven. But not to worry. He will send the Spirit, and he does, on Pentecost. I'm not sure what his followers were expecting, sitting, waiting in Jerusalem. But they could never have imagined what happens. Just as Jesus promised, his followers heard and felt a warm wind whistle around them. The Spirit breezed through and encircled each one of them. They were filled with bold new life. Out of their mouths flowed love in every language. No one could silence them. They were passionate witnesses. Everyone there heard about God's inclusive love. As you can imagine, no no one understood what was happening. Those gathered thought people had had too many mimosas. After all, what would we think if we were down at Maynard's and everyone started speaking in love in every language? It makes sense that people gathered on Pentecost exclaimed, what does this mean? Well, leave it to Peter. Later in our reading from Acts, Peter takes a stab at interpreting what's happening. Peter quotes the prophet Joel. Joel had prophesied that the Spirit would not only rest on prophets and kings, but in this new day, God would bestow the Spirit upon all flesh, all flesh regardless of gender, age, or social status. God told the prophet Joel, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your youth shall see visions. Your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon the lowly, I will pour out my spirit. Peter and those gathered on Pentecost witnessed the Holy Spirit not only validating difference, but blessing difference. Everyone was included. Every language was spoken. Every heart warmed with the Spirit. Incredible how the Spirit embraced each one personally. Jesus knew his disciples would have questions about Pentecost. In our Gospel reading from John, Jesus, in the last week of his life, explains that the Spirit will come to teach and remind them. It will be a gradual learning as they experience life. The Spirit will teach them what they need to know as they go along. Jesus loved to teach. Whether it was beside the sea or up in a mountain, the world was his classroom. But there was resistance to his new perspectives. People were bound by what they already knew. Jesus once told religious leaders, you have a fine way of rejecting God's commandments in order to keep your traditions. Jesus shocked people 
by saying those thought to be cursed were actually blessed. He upset his hometown, declaring that things have to change for the poor and the oppressed. Jesus forgave sins. Did he think he was God? He even broke the law, healing people on the Sabbath. Can you imagine? For the first time, tax collectors, sinners, poor widows, little children, immigrants, and strangers, and a whole host of people considered unworthy outsiders heard they belonged to God's family. Jesus not only validated difference, he blessed it. We live in a culture that tells us there's nothing new under the sun. That mantra can keep us a bit closed-minded, glued to what we are so sure we already know. The phrase, old habits die hard, comes to mind. My husband grew up in southern Minnesota. His hometown is surrounded by farmland as far as you can see. It's a tradition for people to give directions to their homes by saying, look for the little pink schoolhouse and turn right or look for the little pink schoolhouse and turn left. Well, one day the owner of the pink schoolhouse decided to paint it white. That was a problem. No one could find anything. Thank goodness the schoolhouse has been repainted pink. You've heard you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That phrase dates back to 1546 and is considered one of the oldest idioms in the Old English language. Maybe whoever came up with that phrase needed an excuse. We can learn a new thing or two, no matter how old or young we are. Think about your own life and what your life has taught you, or perhaps the Spirit has taught you over the years? Are there things you know now because of experience? Perhaps the Spirit was guiding you. There is a valuable curiosity we cultivate in being open to God's teachings. God has a talent for innovative, inventive moves. And God takes great joy in surprising us. It turns out that being open to learning is a key to discipleship. How we respond to the Spirit's teaching and reminding becomes our witness. Pastor Dave talked about witnessing in his sermon last weekend. To be a witness, you simply share what you've seen and what you've heard, what you've experienced. You don't need to be an expert. And you don't have to have all the answers. In fact, we might be more pleasant to be with if we assume there's a thing or two we can learn. Maybe an important attribute of Jesus' followers is the ability to ask, what does this mean? What is going on, God? We don't know everything there is to know, especially about God and about the Spirit. Maybe we would have more credibility with atheists and agnostics if we acknowledged there's a lot of mystery in our life of faith and that we don't know what we don't know. The followers of Jesus who often asked him, what does this mean, do not get a voice from heaven that tells them the answer. They learn as they go, as the Spirit teaches and reminds them. Jesus promised that his Spirit would abide in community. He also promised that the Spirit would reside with each one of them. If you ever wondered if God cares about you personally, remember the story of Pentecost. The Spirit rested on each one of them no matter who they were. The gift of the Spirit was bestowed on all, regardless of their language, ethnicity, race, creed, gender, or sexual orientation. That very Spirit personally teaches and reminds us of God's love for us so we can boldly 
go to God with anything on our hearts, whatever our circumstance. We can ask, what does this mean, Lord? What do I do now? How do I make sense of my life? There's a book called Let Your Life Speak. It's an invitation to reflect on God's activity in your past to find clues about your future direction. We can always learn by reflecting. But just as important is our present. What if you were to imagine your own personal Pentecost? Might there be a warm wind encircling you? What if you were open to a new teaching from God? Imagine God devising a new beginning, dreaming up a newfangled adventure that's safe because God has your back. Our God of multiplicity and complexity offers multiple Pentecosts. They come as God moves the church beyond our doors out into a world of need. They come as we share our God experiences in community. Pentecost come as a response of God's desire to be intimately and personally engaged with us. The Spirit arrives in worship and in baptism, at confirmation, at our hospital bed, in our times of decision and indecision, in our caring for others. When we say, come Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean the Spirit isn't already in you or alongside you. The Spirit is there all the time. But when we say, come Holy Spirit, we are giving the Spirit our attention. We are giving the Spirit our attention. It's an awareness that we can call on the Spirit, dream with the Spirit, receive comfort and strength and help from the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, good words to remind ourselves the Spirit is present. We might also say something like, Spirit, open us to your abiding, to your presence with us. Pentecost is not just a long-ago happening or a one-time event. It happens more often than we can imagine. More importantly, it happens and takes place in you and in me. Our very own personal Pentecosts are those times we experience a refreshment of the heart. It's the intimate stirring of our souls and opening to learning and to love as Christ loves. Love that shows itself in grace and inclusivity and service. Sometimes Pentecosts happen when we are least aware. We might We might only recognize them in retrospect. Whether we're aware of it or not, the Spirit is always at work, teaching and reminding. Jesus has promised, and Jesus always makes good on his promises. You are loved, and the Spirit of Jesus lives in you. Your life gives witness to this, not only because of what you know, but because of what you are learning and trying. That is what it means to celebrate Pentecost. It's a festival of the heart. A festival because it's a celebration, a fiesta of the best kind. We celebrate that we're a work in progress, learning and growing, shaped and loved by a God who can't help but innovate. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and all people according to their individual needs. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for the spring season as flowers and trees start to bud out again, and we look towards summer filled with more warmth and sunshine and days with family and friends. We are so fortunate to experience the gifts of the changing seasons and to see the rebirth of life and energy each and every year. With this rebirth, give us renewed hope and faith in ourselves, each other, and in you, that there is a plan and hope for our future together. For everything, excuse me, for everything, there is a season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we enter Pentecost, continue to guide us and nurture us and remind us that you remain by us and in us through it all. When we face trials, give us courage. Give us strength to stand up when it's easier not to. And to call out racism, Islamophobia, homophobia, fatphobia, sexism, xenophobia, and especially anti-Asian discrimination. Push us against all discrimination that attempts to overshadow our call to the greatest commandment, love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where there is war, bring peace. Put an end to the deadly attacks taking place between Israel and Palestine. Bring wisdom to leaders and healing to the men, women, and children who have been wounded in the aggression and soothe those who have lost someone near and dear to their hearts. Give them a peaceful space to grieve and to heal. Lord, also bring solace to those who are spending their first summer without a loved one as they continue to grieve while their supportive community may have gone back to their own affairs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With this transition to the new season of Pentecost, we also mark the season of transition for graduates and coffermans and people being baptized who are preparing to embark, excuse me, embark on a new chapter in their own lives as they continue, as they themselves carve out, carve out the journey they have planned for themselves. Give them courage to succeed and press onward and courage to fail and make mistakes, knowing that you are there for them in everything that they do, helping them as many times as they need. For those confirmants beginning this new chapter in faith and people being baptized, guide their hearts, minds, and spirits, knowing that they can do all things through your grace and strength. Their new path begins now, and we as a church community will always be a place they can call home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend, all, O Lord, all for which and whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Zach. We continue our tradition started about the beginning of the pandemic of having members of the congregation write the prayers of the people. So we're very grateful to Zach and the others who have offered to do that on our behalf. And if you're interested, let us know, and we'll put you in touch with Jill Cowan. All right. Peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to please be very intentional this week about sharing that peace with those that you meet. And as we begin the communion, I invite you, if you have these little packets, to have them close by and uh, do not uh, consume them until after we have prayed the Lord's Prayer, and I'll give you an opportunity to do that as well. But for those of you like me who have difficulty pulling back the little saran wrap, you might want to start now. It's like those vegetable bags at Cub that I can never open to get my broccoli in. So, all right. On the night in which he was betrayed... Our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks. And he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, please take out the wafer. And uncover your wine. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep us all in his grace. Amen. Please receive the benediction. And please stand to receive the benediction and join in the sending song. May the love of God enfold us, the wisdom of Christ enlighten us, and the fire of the Spirit kindle us. And may the blessing of the Lord come down upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is sending you. Thanks be to God.